on the Hawkeye Sports Network from Learfield. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast brought to you by Athletico Physical Therapy, proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Big Ten Conference. Also by Iowa's corn farmers of the Iowa Corn Growers Association and Iowa Corn Promotion Board. You may think Iowa grows corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. Also brought to you by Shields. We're right there with you in Des Moines, Sioux City, Iowa City, and Cedar Falls. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Two of the greatest gridiron Hawkeyes arrived on campus in 1999, eager to help new coach Kirk Ferentz retool the Iowa program and get the new century off on the right foot. Both Robert Gallery and Dallas Clark had very few college offers. In fact, Clark walked on, willing to play any position that would appropriate time on the field. Robert Gallery, ironically, was listed as a tight end. Both found their niche and are on this year's College Football Foundation Hall of Fame ballot with winners to be announced later this year. Robert Gallery joins us on this week's Fight for Iowa podcast after a word from our sponsors, Iowa Corn, Shields, and Athletico. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. Oh, you know that old injury of yours, the one in your knee or maybe back? Instead of going to the doctor and then doing physical therapy, why not start with therapy first? Athletico Physical Therapy is changing the whole healing process around. Their physical therapist will find the source of your pain and help fix it. Start with them and start living pain-free. Ah, just like that. It all starts with Athletico Physical Therapy. Schedule your free assessment at athletico.com. No prescription needed. Proud partner of the Iowa Hawkeyes. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. In the movie Field of Dreams, small town farmer Ray Kinsella keeps hearing a voice in the corn and follows his fantasy to build a baseball field. Masonville and Livermore, as small town Iowa as it gets, sent native sons Robert Gallery and Dallas Clark to the football field at Kinnick Stadium to chase their passion. Freshman in 1999, Gallery went on to become the best offensive lineman, winning the Outland Trophy in 2003. Dallas Clark secured the John Mackey Award as college football's top tight end in 2002. Gallery, Clark, and their teammates trusted the Ferentz plan, despite a 3-19 and record the first two seasons. And things changed dramatically in year three. In fact, the tide started to turn near the end of year two, when the Hawkeyes would go 3-9, and an early November double overtime victory at Penn State, followed by a big home win over Northwestern, denying the Wildcats a Rose Bowl bid, gave Gallery and the Hawkeyes renewed belief in their abilities. You know, those hard times, you know, you get a win like that, especially against the caliber of a team like that. And it just, you know, it seemed to, to, to turn things. And uh, you look back at it now, maybe in that moment we didn't know, um, but you look back at it now and absolutely it was a, a catalyst for what was built there. And, and looking back, um, you know, going through those tough times, like that was the start of, hey, this is a lot more fun to win. You know, this is, you know, this is pretty, a pretty, pretty good feeling in, and just building and the to, to keep working to to be able to do those things it was uh yeah it was a, a good uh, good finish to the year there as we kind of started to get some momentum the next year 2001 seven wins an alamo bowl uh, victory over the air raid offense of mike leach and texas tech and that year you protected uh, quarterback kyle mccann's blind side and opened holes for liddell betts how special is it now? Uh, I know you and Kyle remain close, but how special is it now to watch Liddell on the sidelines as running back coach for the Hawkeyes? Yeah, it brings back memories. I, I ran into him uh, last year when I was back, and I mean, it was like the good old days. And now to see him out there uh, passing on his knowledge and wisdom, um, the guy hasn't changed a bit. And, you know, he was, a, you know, an idol of mine, even, you know, blocking for him, right? He was a, a veteran guy. Um, you know, I was a guy just trying to make a name for myself and, and not, uh, you know, not to have too many negative plays at that point in my career, you know, I was just building my career. And, and so guys like Kyle, and I look back to some of these guys I played with and, uh, what a great, uh, a great memory and those guys and they're, they're, they're on now doing things, especially Liddell, uh, passing on what the, all the knowledge and the, the smoothness that he had once he broke through that hole. 
And that was just the beginning. Uh, 2002, a record setting, uh, school record setting, 11 wins. Co Big Ten title with the Buckeyes, first undefeated conference season in 80 years. Uh, and a date for the Hawkeyes in their first ever BCS Bowl against uh, Carson Palmer and, and USC. Uh, your, your head had to be on a swivel that year, keeping defenders off uh, the incomparable quarterback, Brad Banks, Freddie Russell, Jermel Lewis, uh, and an Iowa offense that averaged 37 points. Now, that, that's a season, Robert, that fans and media will always talk about as one of their favorites. Bob Sanders, the hit man uh, leading the defense. What made that, uh, that group, that uh, band of brothers so special in 2002? You know, I think we had been through the, the tough years. Um, uh, you know, I, I still believe even till the, the end of that season, I don't think we knew how good we really were because um, it was just a bunch of guys that went to work um, like we had done the previous years, but we had built, you know, all of those the three years previous, we had built up to, you know, a pretty high powered, you know, offense, defense, you know, the, the offensive line, you look back at it now, um, you know, there was, you know, everyone was drafted or played in the NFL, you know, it was, uh, you know, there were some heavy hitters uh, at that point in our career, but uh, I truly believe, um, you know, really till right before that bowl game that we just didn't quite realize, you know, what we were doing because it was fun. You know, it was uh, a bunch of guys that, that gave it up for each other. And, you know, we just went out and, and had fun and, and we were very successful and things went our way. Robert Gallery in Iowa were on their way off a of banner 2002, but there would be no sneaking up on opponents from this moment on. More Fight for Iowa podcast after this pause. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. There's a sense of pride that comes with the life of a farmer. How many people can say they have a famous tan named after them or be known for their wave when they drive past neighbors and strangers alike on a two-lane road? Whether it's a farmer's tan or the farmer's wave, we are proud to be known for a lot of things. We feel that pride every night at the dinner table, knowing we feed our family and yours. Iowa Corn is proud to be on the sidelines cheering on the Iowa Hawkeyes. In Iowa, we grow corn, but the truth is corn grows Iowa. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. Following a record-setting 2002 season, Iowa football didn't know what to expect. Quarterback Brad Banks was gone and left the controls to Nathan Chandler. Three offensive linemen went to the NFL draft, but plenty of flair and power returned, including left tackle Robert Gallery. Your final year at Iowa, uh, another great one, 2003, 10 wins, it's another top 10 ranking, uh, uh, another New Year's Day bowl game, uh, Robert Gallery, unanimous, all Big Ten, All-American, and Outland Trophy winner. Now your name to be forever etched uh, alongside those of uh, uh, Calvin Jones, uh, Alex Karras, and then Brendan Sheriff uh, after you as the best lineman in college football. Pretty special time in, in the life of the farm boy from uh, – Masonville, huh? Yeah, no, you look back and like I said, it's uh, as you get older and you're, you move on with your life, you look back at those things. And, you know, a lot of that came because of the success uh, we had as a, as a team, right? I, I, I learned that throughout my pro career. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all the people around you. It's uh, winning games, you know, all that, all that stuff comes from, you know, the success of a team. So, yeah, I had a uh, it was great to get that honor, that individual honor. And, but that was, uh, there's no way that would have happened without, you know, the guys next to me, the guys, you know, uh, behind me, um, just uh, the, the winning uh, program that I was in, uh, the coaching I got. Um, so I look back and, yeah, it was, you know, like I said, an indiv individual award, but I don't, I don't take that. And, and, you know, that doesn't sit on my shelf back here behind me as something I accomplished. It's something, uh, you know, we did as a team, you know, I was lucky to be, to be named it. And it's a, a very special memory. And, and I owe a lot of thanks to a lot of guys and a lot of coaches for that. Well, for sure. A lot, you've had many great position coaches. I know, I know you really, uh, 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 adore, uh, Tom Cable, uh, among many, but how does Reese Morgan, uh, stack up, uh, against all the coaches you've had? You know, he's, he's, he's right there with all, I've had so many uh, that, that had a lasting impression on me and, you know, to, to come in and, and work with him when it, you know, I was young still um, with Reese and, 
just his mentality and how, you know, he knows how to talk to guys. I was young and scared and, you know, I didn't really think I knew what I, you know, could accomplish, but, um, you know, he was able to push me, um, and, and get out of me and, and mentor me, um, into what it took to be, you know, not only a good person, which I, you know, I feel like I had from my upbringing, um, but just to the next level, um, with football life and, and how to keep things in perspective. It was just a good, uh, great relationship, uh, owe a lot to him and, a guy that I will always, you know, call a friend and, and cherish as a, you know, as a mentor. Of course, the, uh, the football career now, uh, then and now takes a backseat to uh, wife Becca, uh, former star for Lisa Bluter, both of you uh, teachers, school teachers, by the way, and, and uh, the three youngsters, Hayden, uh, Brooklyn, and, and Lincoln. How, how's the family doing? I'm sure you're active chasing them around. Yeah, that's great. It's, uh, you know, it's a great point in my life. You know, you, you look back and, and we, uh, you know, in a pro career, I, we probably waited. I was a little older uh, when we have kids, if you can say that. But for me to be able to be uh, retired from football at this point and be able to go to soccer games, softball games, volleyball games, you know, every night at three different locations. You know, I, I, I think of my parents doing it in five different locations and it's exhausting and it's tough to get there, but it's worth every minute in the car. And it's uh, rewarding to see them, especially because it's, you know, we don't have to push them to want to do it. Hey, we want to do this. We want to try this. We want to try these different things, all the different things they're doing. It uh, makes me proud. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, Beck and I both coming from obviously a, a sports background, you know, hopefully we can pass some of that on. Hopefully, uh, you know, obviously we're both competitive. Uh, hopefully we don't push too much but I think you know if our kids are into it and uh you know they're like us they're gonna they're gonna take off and they're gonna get some knowledge from what what we went through as, as college athletes you you mentioned your parents Mike and Mary they're they're all Americans uh, as well and I know you get back for a couple games every year but uh, the pasture uh, the corn and and soybean fields they're just important to you as that that grassland at Kinnick aren't they yeah, they really are. I mean, that's, that's, I mean, even, you know, football is such a big part of my life. Um, but you know, that farm was there long before I was ever on a football field. Uh, that's, that's how we were raised. That's, you know, what they still do. That's, that will be, you know, their legacy, their, my grandparents legacy. Um, that's, that's my upbringing and where I, where I got my roots, my, you know, the, the farm grassroots, you know, I owe it all to them. You know, that's that's just plain and simple uh, where all this started. And, you know, the farm's a special place. You know, it's, you know, I get back to that game, but you, you better believe if I'm uh, back in town, we're on the farm and, and I'm on the farm probably, you know, many more times than I'm back for football games. I love football games, but, you know, I love taking the kids where I grew up to ride in the tractors and do some of that work that we did growing up. And like I said, it's just, that's the part of, that's where I will always be. You know, people ask where I'm from. I'm from Masonville, Iowa. You know, even though I live in California, it's just a special place. And you'll always be on the a and uh, wall of honor. America needs farmers, uh, which is very important to Kirk Ferentz too. And I know that makes coach all the more proud, uh, you and, and all the, the farm boys from around Iowa, Bruce Nelson and Dallas and I'm going to leave somebody out, Campman. I mean, it's just a special, special piece of Kinnick history there, which, which Robert Lashley uh, makes the head coach even more special. Uh, you know, he's not changed his approach uh, for success in football or life in his almost 25 years uh, in Iowa City, 33, counting as a assistant uh, apprenticeship with Hayden Fry. In your view, what is it about Kirk Ferentz that, that makes him unparalleled? I just think he he has stayed who he is from the day that we walked onto that campus almost together in 1999, you know, as him as the head coach, uh, till, you know, two, three months ago when I was back and I sat in the office and talked to him. Um, his approach to football, to life, to how he treats people, um, it has never wavered. He has never wavered with the changing of times, of social media, of recruiting, um, you know, all those things that I see now as, you know, from when I was, uh, you know, from 20 some years ago that I'm like, I'm so happy. I'm not a part of this era of social media and rankings and all this stuff that at the end of the day means nothing. Um, you know, and it is, I get it's recruiting, but he is not, 
you know, he has not changed who he is. I think that's, you know, why I have so much respect for him. Um, he is the same man from 20 some years ago, as far as a coach, and he's just a caring individual. He, uh, we still sit down, uh, together and talk that, you know, my kids, uh, hanging around, you know, it is genuine. Uh, he's not checking a box by seeing us when we're back. Uh, he takes the time, um, to genuinely sit, you know, talk to Beck and I talk with the kids. Uh, it's just, I think that's the thing. It's just so genuine, you know, it's, it's part of that Midwest, you know, what you expect. So it's not uh, unexpected or surprising to me, but that's just something that, you know, when, when he's done and retired, I will still have those conversations. I think it's, uh, you know, it's a friendship, you know, now that I'm, you know, older and, and, and gone from football, that it's a friendship that won't be there a very long time, along with many other coaches um, that were there, uh, when, you know, when I played. Gallery's nine-year NFL career was often sidetracked by a multitude of injuries, position switches, and no less than four head coaches with different philosophies. Despite the detours, Robert Gallery showed up for work every day. What a player. He and wife Becca reside in Lake Tahoe, where they enjoy watching many games weekly involving their children. I'll be back to conclude this week's show in a minute. More of the Fight for Iowa podcast after this. Here we go. Exciting adventures await. Grab your bucket list and keep the fun going all summer long. Pitch a tent, grab a sleeping bag, and sleep as a family under the stars. Fire up the grill and host a backyard barbecue. Visit a local trail for a hike or a drive to a state park for an all-day family adventure. With all there is to do this summer, we encourage you to get outside and make new memories. Whatever you do this summer, Shields is right there with you. This is the Fight for Iowa podcast. Here's the voice of the Hawkeyes, Gary Dolphin. When Robert Gallery and teammates gather for their 20th anniversary celebration of that trend-setting 2002 season this fall, they'll see a little bit of their old self. A physical defense with a downhill-running All-American middle linebacker. A veteran cornerback who's almost always in the right place. A punter that puts them in excellent field position. And hopefully, an offense that's averaging close to its production of two decades ago. I'm Gary Dolphin for Fight for Iowa. Thanks for listening. Hawkeye fans, remember to hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. Once you become a Fight for Iowa podcast subscriber, you'll automatically receive the latest episodes of the Fight for Iowa podcast, the Herkey's Voice podcast, Hawk Talk replays, exclusive game day content, and more. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the Hawkeye Sports Network.